Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the uh, town board meeting for Wednesday, July 28th. Start with the pledge by Councilwoman Kerr. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Friend, will you call the roll? Present. Councilwoman Kern. Present. Councilman Isaacson. Present. Supervisor Lawton. Present. Uh, we will just have our opening uh, public comment session. If anybody would like to speak. Mr. Rossi. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Frank Rossi, Jr., 63 Saratoga Avenue, Apartment B, also spot. <coughs> I wanted to thank uh, the three members of the board that I got to speak with this week, uh, Councilwoman Kerr, Councilman Perlish, and Supervisors Lockett. Uh, this is about the uh, Route 50 corridor city, which I know kind of fell off the agenda tonight due to circumstances beyond the town's control. Uh, as you know, I represent Gary Russo, who is the owner of the... I don't mean to interrupt you, but we're getting questions at this moment. Yeah, no, I just, I just turned them. I okay. forgot. I'm sorry. Here. No problem. Just to review, Frank Rossi Jr. Uh, talking about the Route 50 corridor site uh, that is uh, not on tonight's agenda, from what I understand, due to circumstances beyond the town's control. Uh, I did want to raise an issue, though, as somebody who represents Gary Russo, who's the owner of over 90 acres, uh, the old Sunmark uh, site on uh, the corner of North Line Road and Route 50. Uh, we've been, since this topic has started up, kind of on the ground, kind of looking at different options as we've talked about mixed-use ideas in the Route 50 corridor. And it's been interesting to see fully what the views of developers and the views of uh, real estate folks is on that property uh, over the last few months especially. And what we've learned is that indeed, as the survey that Jackie had shown from MJ, uh, mixed use is definitely desirable in that corridor. Uh, for instance, uh, Mr. DeRusso's site, nine acres, there's definitely a lot of interest in possibly putting residential toward the back of that site where commercial doesn't seem to be as readily desirable, uh, both on the consumer user end and I think the community end as well because there's forever wild right adjacent to that property. As it stands right now, three pad sites could be put on that property, commercial pad sites, and that would be pretty much a traffic disaster, I think we all would assume, that would have to be really looked at carefully. Whereas, to put, let's say, 80 to 100 residential units in the back and some limited commercial up front, and the three acres that remain up front, let's say, if we were to go split three acres, six acres, or two and a half, six and a half, or something along those lines, it would at least give you some predictability. And it gave us the idea to look at the entire corridor a little bit, to think about, well, as you approach zoning ideas, what would work here? Or what, what would the view be? Because densities in a zone like that, I don't think are one size fits all. And all, others have agreed with us in that idea. For instance, where the Briarwood uh, property is, it doesn't look like that property could you know support densities like that because ingress and egress might be bigger a bigger issue than on Mr. DeRusso's property. So I would like to bring up the idea of using a tool you already have but to change it a little bit in terms of the PUDD. I think it might be the simplest way to allow for mixed use that you can control in a project by project basis or property by property basis. Currently you have a minimum threshold in terms of acreage for PUDDs that's to protect I think the rural character of some areas of the Community. There's nothing stopping us from amending that to say, okay, that stays, but also we can include properties of blank acres on Route 50 in that corridor as well. I would encourage you to perhaps maybe discuss this in old business a little bit because I think we know what the view of the town is about mixed use right now in that area. And I can elaborate a little bit further on what our findings are and where it's coming from to a certain degree. But I would like to see the town start working in that direction. I'm happy to volunteer my time to work with Jim Craig and MJ Engineering to look at that idea as we continue to move forward. Because I think there's a demand more up front than we realize 
to make that happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, we'll close. Oh, wait, I'll go. Okay. I'm sorry, Gina, didn't see you put your hand up. That's all right. I was dropping things. <laughs> Gina Morosi, can you hear me okay? Closer, just get me closer to it. Gina Morosi, 10 Glory Lane, Walston Spa, Town Milton. I want to read something to everyone here, and then I want some, hopefully some comment. This was written, was a public comment that was written the day of the last election in our town. And it was a public comment, so I'll, I'll go ahead and say who wrote it, because public. It was written by Melissa Riley Taylor. <clears throat> and it was shared to Benny Zlotnick and Debbie Zlotnick. Local friends. As some of you have followed local politics in the news and on social media may have seen, it has gotten quite nasty at times. I found myself and many others, sadly, on the receiving end of attacks from some local business owners, developers, who are particularly persistent in their attempts to intimidate and embarrass, and embarrass with the end goal of silencing those who don't support who or what they do. There were times I was fearful and would look over my shoulder while putting the garbage out. I jumped when someone came through the door unexpectedly, and I did wonder what lengths they might go to if I kept speaking the truth. Yes, I wondered what got, I got myself into, but maybe it's the Irish in me. I wasn't going to let these bullies intimidate me. Of course, all those involved in the current election are following these incidents on social media. If you're watching closely, then you saw a better Balls and Spots Facebook page, the video on where one of these family members who owns local apartments chased volunteer campaigners off his property and verbally attacked and threatened to break their phone. Why? Because he only wants the residents to get political information he approves. That's fascism. And not surprisingly, that family has donated thousands to the campaigns of current supervisor Ostrander Steen, who never denounced this behavior or that awful behavior on social media. Think there's not much happening in the town of Milton? Think again. While I really don't want to admit that I was fearful of the attacks I've experienced and seen, and I was partly because people warned me to be careful, that's when I became most concerned. And while I'm I'm a persistent supporter of Benny Zlotnick. Guess what he said to me? Be careful, Melissa. Benny has much to gain from residents like me being outspoken against the opposition and their supporters in favor of his team. But he set that aside to think of the impact on me and perhaps my family. Regardless of the outcome of the election, I always remember the kind of person Benny Zlotnick is to set aside his aspirations and to support and support to think about what is most important. This is who he is. This is why I spent countless hours volunteering for his campaign. I have nothing to gain but the benefits of him overseeing our town. Now, my question after reading that, is this what we have to look forward to for this election? I, I don't know how to answer that. Well, it would be a yes or a no, probably. Okay, then, no, I don't think this is what we have to look forward to. Are you going to, uh, oh, and by the way, just so that you know, this was shared by your political operative, Keith Lewis, to several pages, including your campaign page. So I'm asking you to make a promise, and for everybody that's involved in this campaign, to make a promise that we're not going to see this crap happen again in this election. It's uncalled for. It's slanderous, okay? And I've been holding it for a special time. I'm feeling particularly bitchy tonight, so that's why I read it. Um, I don't want to see this happen again, and I don't think it should happen, and I don't think it's proper. Uh, so I'm asking everybody to commit to the fact that we're not going to do this this year. That would we're be great. Be that, that would be wonderful. I'll, I'll, yes, I won't, put, I won't put anything out like that. No, I'm not asking to put out. I'm asking for you to don't condone it and put a stop to it because if it's your supporters doing it, you have the power to say to them, don't do that. I can, ask, that's I can ask people not to do things, but I can't tell people what to do. 
I think that responsibility has to be taken for your, what your supporters are doing. I heard that this was going on, that things like this were being said, that you know the mob was supporting your opposition and things like that. But then I have it in writing. I found it, okay? It, it, the internet is an amazing thing. And I don't think it's fair for anybody in your town to be discussed in this way. And if anybody in this room knows me, you know I'm not hiding in the bushes when someone's taking out their garbage. I'll go knock on their door and I'll tell them face to face, okay? So this needs to stop. This is horrible. And I think you'll agree with me that this is horrible. I agree. I will ask people not to do that. Did you tell them to be careful? Yes, I did. Why? Not because of what she was saying. I was just, she was nervous about things. I didn't know, what, what, what am I supposed to tell her? That she had nothing to worry about? That I, I just said be careful. I didn't mean it in any derogatory way or anything. I just said to be careful. Hey, Ellie, why are you waving your arms and shaking your head? I'm just talking in my native. Um, I don't need to comment right now, okay? I, I, I will ask people not to say things. But I have no control over what people put on Facebook. Well, <coughs> on, their own, on their own pages, I have no control over that. Facebook doesn't have any control over that. We've seen that. Well, it, it was posted the, day, the morning of the election, and it came down at the close of the polls, just so you know. Again, I have no control over that. Anyone else? Seeing none, we will close uh, public comment. Move on to a motion to accept the minutes from July 14th, 2021. My other question is, who's going, does that include installation? No, I saw, it doesn't. 
So who's going to put these on the trucks? We'll do it ourselves. I, I understand it's not that difficult to do. I've been told by all three of the bidders that it isn't difficult to do. Nobody wants to move on it, we'll skip it. Next up is a motion to approve MJ Engineering for uh, Fuel Island work at a cost of $18,425. A couple years ago, we put money away, over $600,000 for a Fuel Island and cold storage. I've spoken to Joel, he can get working on this. Superintendent Forbes has let us know for several years now that this, the island has uh, very old gas tanks under the ground and he's concerned about leakage and such, so about it's time we move on this. I sent you all the proposal with the uh, fees on it, so if someone wants to move on it, that'd be great. I'm going to be upfront and honest about this. Um, I don't think it's a good time to start second major project when we haven't completed the first one. I think we're right in the middle of this town hall issue, and I think that has to be taken care of before we get into another major project. And it's my understanding that moving these gas aisles is a major project. So I don't know how the rest of the board feels, but... Okay. Just, just a comment, I guess. I, I know it's been discussed in past meetings that we seem to go to MJ Engineering, our preferred you know, partner. Um, are they equipped to handle a, an additional project like this while dealing with the town, town hall renovations? We can all sit there work. And since we're potentially adding additional projects, I see this, and the next line item is the EPA regulations that MJ is also assisting with, is it potentially time to look at alternate engineering companies to see if they could offer a better rate? We can do that for for, uh, for next year. But we would have to wait until next year. We couldn't. No. We couldn't. Well, we, we have to put out a proposal for what scope of work we want these engineers to do, and then, then they can bid on it. I don't think this is the right time to do this, to be honest with you, Benny. I asked for the last few years when I was in charge of facilities to move this forward, and you kept saying it wasn't the right time. Now we're a couple months before an election, and now it seems to be the right time to do it. I well, John, to agree. Let, me, let me interrupt you for Honestly, a second, John. I'm damned if finish. I do, and I'm damned if I don't. Because if I don't get anything done, someone's going to say he didn't do anything for two years. But now that I'm moving on something, it's an election year. You know what? We'll do it all in 2021, 22, when it's not anybody's election year. My point is, Benny, that the quickest way to get in a problem with any specs or bidding or any project is to rush it. We're not rushing anything. There's and there's plans well, and pictures. Can I finish yet? <clears throat> We're headed into August now. Luckily, if we get it bid out September, and you're going to be headed into the winter months trying to do all this work. It isn't just a matter of putting the gas islands in. It's a matter of putting the gas islands in. It's a matter of putting the support, support structure up so that you've got a place to house computers and things like that that are associated with the gas islands. This isn't an easy project. It isn't just slam, bam, drop it on the ground. And I think waiting until, I have to agree with Barb, we ought to finish this project. I don't want to agree in the types, but. No, I know you don't, but thank Dave's letter earlier in this year stated the fact that the tanks are over 30 years old and he had concerns. I, 
thought we were making progress on the town hall and we could move on. Jason, am I wrong? That letter was last year. Okay. In the middle of the pandemic and everything else that was going on, so all right, we didn't get to that. Great. All right, that's fine. Next up is a motion to approve MJ proposal to bring the town in compliance with EPA regulations at a cost to be no more than six thousand dollars. I sent you all the paperwork on that. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? No, this is something that has to be done to come in compliance with EPA. There isn't a lot of choice on this matter. There's a very strict time frame. So yes. Very strict time frame. It's got to be done by the end of the day. Oh, okay. Thank you. What? It's, it's just paperwork for stormwater management. Stormwater management. Apparently, a lot of. Apparently, a lot of. Yes, a lot of towns are out of compliance. Uh, Brenda, can you, uh, any further discussion? Brenda, can you pull the board, please? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Hurd. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalat. Yes. Next up is a motion to approve control of Bramer and the town clerk how to work up a bid for the audio visual equipment. Some of the equipment that we looked at is on state contract and some of it isn't, so we need to draw up a, a, a better RFP and uh, Dave and Brenda have offered to do that. I'll make that motion. Second. Any discussion? And this is all going to be adaptable to town hall one. Yes. Yes. <coughs> Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalotnik. Yes. Next up is an update on, on Town Hall. Uh, John and I met today with uh, MJ. We took a walk around the grounds out front, and then we sat down and went through a, a plan. John, you want to give us a little... Uh, Give everybody a little bit of information, please. Uh, basically, we went through the final uh, page by page on the 90%. It was, I think, maybe two or three minor changes. They were going to put that together next week. Everything is going out to bid on this fourth with an opening in September that follows the schedule. Thank you. Uh, next up are the monthly reports. Start with uh, animal control. Uh, next up is uh, animal control. For the month of June, there was uh, 57 phone calls in, 187 out, 49 license compliances, 34 field investigations, three emergency calls, and three dangerous dog hearings in process. Uh, building department. and town board members. During the month of June, the building department process, I've been told to speak into the microphone, processed 58 building permits and collected $15,335.12 in building permit fees. We completed 223 construction inspections, 40 fire safety inspections, and responded to 24 code enforcement complaints. A total of 45 permits were, were closed with 18 certificates of occupancy and 27 certificates of compliance being issued. We collected $500 in planning fees. Please find the appropriate itemized before detached, respectfully submitted bill list. Thank you. Uh, buildings and grounds for July. Uh, buildings and grounds report July 2021. During the month of July, we've completed the following tasks. Mowing of town property and parks, painted of painting of tables at Burgess Kimball Park, Painted Pavilion 2 at Burgess Kimball Park, 
painted all guardrails in Burgess Kimball Park, cleaning and disinfecting of the community center and court, fixed the emergency door at the community center, replaced the bathroom door at the Suzanne Lyle Park, and performing of maintenance on park. Thank you. Uh, the controller's report, budget versus actual, you all have that. Uh, next up is the highway report. The highway department spring cleanup ended May 15th, and <clears throat> I was asked to emphasize that because they get a lot of calls, people putting their brush out, and we don't pick it up during the summer months. Town residents can bring their lawn debris to the transfer station located at 503 Geyser Road. Transfer station hours are Monday through Thursday from 6 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Saturdays 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's closed on holiday weekends. There's no regular pickup of lawn debris until fall pickup begins October 15th. We have continued infrastructure repairs throughout Rollins Hollow West and other areas throughout the town. Uh, numerous catch basins needed repair or replacement. Respectfully submitted town bill and highway department. Thank you. Our historian. I continue to work from home answering research requests, doing research on Rock City Falls, and doing research on our Heritage Award property and documenting the COVID-19 pandemic. A few weeks ago, the county COVID dashboard stopped recording specific numbers for the town of Milton and Balsa Scott. The county now only updates their dashboard on Mondays for the whole county as of two days ago on Monday. Our county has 181 new cases since July 1st. There are currently 121 active cases with two people hospitalized. The seven-day rolling average is currently at 3.3%. There has been no additional deaths over the last month, thank goodness. The Historic Structures and Places Committee met on July 7th, 2021 at the Community Center. Discussion focused on the West Mount Cemetery, and the Boy Haven Cemetery. Stones in the Boy Haven Cemetery still have not been repaired up yet as of last week. We also discussed the property will be celebrating in September for our annual Heritage Award and the progress of the Forgotten Crossroads video of Rock City Falls. The committee also decided to do repainting of the Greentown Cemetery signs over the summer. We hope to get to that. Our next regular committee meeting is next week August 4th here at the Community Center at 6.30. Anyone interested in our local history is welcome to attend. The Rock City Park video is coming along good. We have all the voiceovers done and we need a live video from the Cottrell Paper Company. I have been meeting with some of the residents of Rock City Falls to get pictures and stories over the past couple of months and this has been very enriching for me. Our next meeting for the video is on, well it was this past Monday, at Brookside, and we hope to have this video up on YouTube in September or October. Saratoga County History Center, Brookside, had its big reopening on Saturday, June 26th. There's four new exhibits to check out. A Century of Ice Cream, the Dave Family and Stewart's, the Country Store in Saratoga County, the Social Life of Hats, and the Mystery Photographs from Eastern Saratoga. I attended the grand opening and I was very impressed with these exhibits. Take some time and go see them before they're gone. The summer hours are Thursdays 1 to 6 and Fridays through Saturdays and Sundays 1 to 5. They also continue to post virtual programs to their website and to YouTube. Check them out. And after you go there, you can stop in the National Bottle Museum on Milton Avenue and check out their exhibits. Have you ever been there? because there are times we go right on by. So anyway, that's respectfully submitted, Karen Stoppers. Thank you, Karen. Yep. Down clerk. All right, June 2021. Marriages, 10. Certified <coughs> marriage certificates, 6. Certified death certificates, 31. Oil and search of records, 7. Dog licensing, 230. Online dog licensing, 51 and we did $695.50 just online. 
this is because we now have an animal patrol and she's bringing people in. Uh, hunting and fishing license, we did 20, and pavilion rentals, we did 11. We brought in $5,005.59. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have anything from town justice or town court? Tax collector season's over. You throw uh, planning and zoning liaison report. Okay. <laughs> planning board had uh, four things on it this month. The uh, first was the continuation of the Astro Solar Project review, uh, continuation of the public hearing for the Murray Road Solar Farm. And basically, the two solar farms got the same decision by the planning board they revised the decommissioning plan to increase it some i don't know if they did they approve it i don't know it sounds good yeah they did um, so that's where they stand there was also a new request for a site plan review and special use permit for a cell tower a new cell tower in ostro which has to go through some research first because our town code calls for cells to go locate and the claim by the applicant is he doesn't like the deal that Verizon is giving him. So now they want to put up a second tower. Um, the last thing was a townhouse Cabo Cottage Hill townhomes proposal on 240 Greenfield Avenue and that's a new application that just started. The zoning board had only one thing this month, and that was an area variance for Atomic Project Road. Public hearing was scheduled for the August meeting. Thank you, John. Uh, from the county, for the, for the committees that I was on that month, this month, um, trails and open space approved, uh, harvest uh, contract for Northumberland, because they are clearing uh, land out there to move the butterflies from the airport out to Northumberland. Um, we approved the contract for 25000 just under $25,000 there. Um, and the other one was public safety, and the public uh, the committee has uh, offered uh, to uh, take care of school resource officers, or to, to assign school resource officers. The Boston Spa Central School District is, district is going to get two resource officers uh, paid, to be paid for by the school district at a cost of just over $74,000 a year. Uh, we have any old business that anybody wants to bring up? Yes. Yeah, so, um, I'm confused a little bit. <coughs> I've gotten some answers over the last few days. The Liberty Hills um, Water District. I understand the holdup is escrow account for their engineers, which is Jason. Can you go through that with us? And I don't know, I, from what I understand, if they're only asking for a $5,000 um, escrow account, um, and I, I for $5,000, I kind of hate to hold up this whole project, but I'd like to see it move forward and some kind of decision made on it, but right now it's at a standstill. It's, 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 at a, it's not at a standstill. We're just trying to figure out the best way to either set up an escrow account or have Chazen bill us directly. Um, Dave thinks it's a better deal for Chazen just to bill us directly for work done. And so... Um, I'm, I'm of the understanding that Chazen does not want to sign a contract with us because they are under contract to the village. I yeah. did speak to Larry about it. Um, and I believe they already have $2,000 into this project, which we already owe the village. So I, I think it should be a board discussion on um, what they feel they'd like to do. Anyone else have any input? Uh, just quickly, whether you have it in an escrow or you build directly, I mean, it still essentially it comes back to us. Just because it's paid out of an escrow, the town is paying, chasing. I understand how that should account work. Yeah, that shouldn't <clears throat> make a difference. I Think, as far as our account. I, I think Jim, one of Jim's concerns is, is it going to go over that? But I, but I believe Chazen is the one who said $5,000 would cover the work they had to do. 
it could very well be. And if any, huh? It could very well be. Well, we don't, <coughs> we don't want, want to keep kind of track of it. You know, we have a responsibility too, but um, uh, yeah, can I, I think. Can I, since I'm representing the district, can I speak uh, to this? Um, briefly, please. Sorry to interject, but I just wanted to clarify it so that we're all working on the same information. We've got Frank Rossi Jr., 63 Saratoga we'll Ave, Harvey B., also stop. Uh, Barb is correct, uh, Councilwoman Kerr, that uh, I had the same conversation with Mayor Wilbright on uh, Monday, excuse me, Monday, and with the Treasurer after the meeting because there was this back and forth uh, discussion. I know you had, had a conversation with Gina, uh, my sister, about this, who was also helping try to move this forward. We've been I think we had this in December of last year, and it sounds like there's been virtually no progress except for $2,000 worth of work done by Jason to that point, and they are concerned, I think, about some of the things they've heard about the town not paying bills, possibly, and that these are outstanding bills that they do not, quote, they do not want to have a direct uh, relationship with the town in that respect. They would rather have this go through a normal, as if I were an applicant for a planning board and I have to put into an escrow account for engineering. The town is sitting in the shoes of the applicant here and the village is requiring that type of approach because their engineers do not want to work directly with the town in that respect for payment purposes. I, this is one of those don't shoot the messengers, but I know that we have wells that are at risk of going dry here and we are kind of sitting back and having this kind of flip back and forth while it shouldn't have to be that. If the money's got to be paid for, as you know, if we move forward with it, it's reimbursed to the town as it's put into the cost of development of the uh, water district, ultimately. I'm sure there's a risk uh, that it won't be approved when it goes back to the uh, folks, but I can assure you that there is a heavy desire to link into town, into the village water by the town here in this water district. So I think the risk is low. And I think it's necessary at this point to move forward. Thank you. Mr. Supervisor, I'd just add to that. Um, I think the concern from um, our controller's uh, point of view was, uh, and this kind of piggybacks on what John uh, Polish was just saying, is that the escrow account that's set up is, isn't going to actually be a, a town escrow account. It's going to be a village escrow account, which we'll have no control over and no say in as far as when things get paid out. So I think the protocol, or at least uh, the mechanisms that we need in place is that we at least uh, go ahead and set that escrow account up, but we at least see the billing from Jason before uh, the village goes and pays them. Um, I haven't seen anything on this as far as what work is being done uh, by Jason. Uh, perhaps members of the board have, but I think that if we're going to give money over to the village, uh, at least from our controller standpoint, we need to have some type of say as far as what goes out just to make sure the building is for the work that was supposed to be done. And also, I, I, I haven't seen anything far as far as uh, a proposal from Chazen saying it's $5,000 or $400 or $20,000. That's just a, a figure that I've seen that's been thrown out. I also, Jim, haven't seen anything in writing. I don't think it's unreasonable for the, if we set this escrow up for village to be accountable and the town get the records or, or the billing as it goes through. I was told by Mayor Wilbright and the bookkeeper um, that they gave them an estimate and if we have to work it that way, work it that way, get something you know directly from them saying you know, it's going to be approximately $5,000. Um, I was also told if there's anything left, it would come back to the town, obviously. <laughs> With those protocols in place, I suggest somebody make a motion to uh, establish that escrow account with the village so that the matter does move forward. Uh, I'll make a motion that we set the escrow account up with the stipulations that we get the um, the bills from Chazen, and you know we have the accounting information on it. For, for the amount of five thousand dollars. Yes. I can second that. Any, any further discussion? Yeah. Just clarification. Five thousand dollars less what we apparently owe them already. So, which is about two thousand.
that has not been paid it should be. I think the bill would be paid. Yeah, the bill would be paid. Well, is that two thousand dollars? Is that part of the five, or is it going to be a seven thousand dollars? No, I believe it's. I believe it's the five. Well, let's. You know, um, they've already spent the five thousand or two thousand of that money. They've already paid Chase in two thousand for this project, and we can get the exact numbers. Like I said, if we're getting the accounting, we'll get the exact numbers. We'll get the invoices for what they've already spent. Brenda, can you pull the board, please? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Yes. Councilman Saxon. Yes. Supervisor Blatt. Yes. Go ahead. Can we do something over on Wood Thrush along the playground? This is the third time I've asked. Um, to help those people over there a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a really expensive project. Maybe we can get highway to dump a burn over there. <laughs> I'll have Anthony look into. Okay. I'll have Anthony look into uh, bushes or something, some kind of noise uh, or yeah. abatement. I don't. Personally, I don't think it's a good idea to cordon off a, a park like that. But if um, you think it's something to move forward on, then we'll give it a shot. Well, it's going to have to be a board decision, but. I'll have Anthony give, come up with some numbers for uh, okay. Thank you. DC size uh, Under new business, I have a couple of things. Does anybody else have anything under new business? Just one quick question. Sure, John. Now, uh, I know we you were going to look into a appraiser for communities project. Did you get any movement on that? I, I reached out to a couple of people, but I haven't heard back from them yet. Uh, we got our sales tax distribution for the month here, and for this month it was $492,000. That's an increase of almost $80,000 over last year, which isn't surprising since last year nothing was going on. Uh, for the year, the town is up almost 19% in sales tax revenue. Uh, the 2021 campaign ended last week. The weekly winners were Sandra Stanton, Beatrice Loyola, Miriam Forget and Christine Nanariello. Uh, the winner of the $500 gift certificate was Joanne DeVoe. Uh, this, the past week they had 85 participants who spent almost uh, $7,900. Over the course of the last five weeks they had 442 receipts that were submitted and the total for the four localities was over $38,000. Uh, I think that was a, a, a pretty good turnout and response. Uh, the Chamber also plans to do this across all the communities in Saratoga County from October 12th to December 31st as a means to encourage people to spend money locally. Uh, the Chamber will be doing posters for every community just as we did with Save Our Locals and Stronger Together. Um, and this is from Top Shift because he just wanted to thank everybody for everybody in, the, in those four towns or wherever you live for doing your shopping locally. That being said, we, uh, I need a motion to, uh, well, actually, a uh, public comment. We'll have our last uh, closing public comment session, if anybody has any. Sick me again? That would be. Uh, Frank Rossi, Jr., 63 Saratoga Avenue, Apartment B, Boston Spa, New York. Uh, just, the last meeting, I made the comment I said as uh, you may come across as tongue in cheek, but it was realistic about communication between the board. Tonight's meeting may have been worse than the last in terms of the first two matters that you were trying to move forward outside of procedural things. And I think there is a legitimate concern that the business of the town is not going to get done pending this election. Mind you, at the beginning of this meeting, I discussed a matter that I've spoken with Councilwoman Kerr, Councilman Frolish, and the supervisor on, the idea of maybe looking into how we can make a PUDD approach on the Route 50 corridor. I understand MJ's got a report coming out, but we also know the zoning approach or mentality about mixed use that's being embraced by the town and that we have some information on that would help, I think, push forward this type of situation. I don't. Mr. DeRusso doesn't. Others don't. I, 
Mr. Marley, who uh, is his real estate broker, we're talking about it today. We all see this as a very positive, proactive step. I understand you have ideas for what you want to do in the corridor and the medians and all that stuff, but the sound first step is to look at your zoning, handle your zoning as soon as you can, especially if there are developers waiting to try to come in. They're not looking to just ambush you with a plan you don't want. It's an idea of working with the town. That's what the PUDD really does. It goes from the town board to the planning board for workshops normally. They give the recommendations, goes back up to the uh, town board with recommendations one way or the other. The town board works to amend the legislation proposed by the developer, the applicant, and you go from there with a sketch plan that shows the practicality of it. It's not, uh, you know, complete biblical uh, sense of it has to be that sketch plan, but it essentially shows the feasibility of what's being proposed. The UDD is a great thing to help allow that mixed use here. As I said, it would have been good during old business, I think, to have a discussion about maybe looking into the legal aspect of it, and I'm willing to actually volunteer my time to the town to assist Jim, who's very good, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he can't do it, but I know he does a lot of other things for this town every month. And so, to work with him to see where we could fit this or how we can make it work with the existing legislation to make it a nice, easy, clean process for the town and move this forward. And instead it was ignored, and I think there was a little bit of anxiety to even move on anything tonight because of this damned election. I've reached out to people that think I hate them for whatever reason or didn't want to work with them over the years, over the past couple weeks, because that's not who I am. I'm not that guy that doesn't want to see our town move forward. I would ask you to do the same here. Let's talk about this for a couple minutes at least, and maybe move this in the right direction. If we all agree, this might be the right approach, ultimately, for the town at large. Let's do it for the town. Let's stop doing it for votes. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Bogosian. Tom Bogosian, Middle Line Road, Olson Spot. Um, yeah, I enjoyed this meeting. Uh, welcome to development. Uh, we as developers escrow money every day with your town, and we have no say in it. And you pay the engineers out of it, and if we run out, uh, you have us give you more money, and you pay them more. I would love to see some accountability on bills. That would be nice. Uh, and my immediate issue is uh, the dirty water. I mean, Mr. Ross is interested on the front end of the water coming in. I'm interested on the water as it exits. And in particular, we're about a month out from a rate hearing, and I didn't hear any discussion on board tonight and uh, as to protocol, procedure, and how we're proceeding. And I would be interested to hear comments from board members um, as to how we're going to proceed with this. Nothing. Thank you. Anyone else? Wow. Do I wait since December? I've been 20 years. <laughs> wow. Sharon, go ahead. Uh,
to apply it or uh, hang in somehow and be like, oh, we can get this something. Uh, but let's remember why we're moving the car to the butterfly. We're moving these little butterflies so that we can mow over at the airport. Uh, my concern right now is, are they not mowing? At all well, because I don't know, there's a lot of air traffic right now coming in and out of the airport, and um, if they're not able to mow, maybe they should shut the thing down so that there's no accidents over there. Um, I don't know if it's uh, how that's going to help uh, the mowing situation. If we're not doing it now, why do we even care? Why are we using the butterfly? I think that would be my question. Why are we using the butterfly? Expand the runway. We expand the runway so that we can allow bigger jets. We can say this, we can keep saying it until someone hears it. And please, keep the butterflies where they are and go way better for That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Judah. Michelle Judah, 34 Van Tassel Lane. Um, you know, I want to um, echo the comments of Mr. Rossi about uh, needing to be able to stay on task with town business. Uh, but I would also like to comment that, you know, the town board meetings are for town business. And I think that all of us, uh, including the residents, uh, need to agree not to use them for political grandstanding um, in conversations about politics, conversation about the upcoming election. If we want to keep the board focused on the business, then that's where we should be focused as well. Um, and in regards to that, I'm going to make a comment that I have made over and over again. The controller should be providing a report, not just in writing that gets filed with no discussion, but the controller should actually be at these meetings and provide a summary of, um, you know, his opinion as an accountant as to where things are with finances. We hear from every other town department, every committee, um, there's a report, a verbal report given everywhere else. Um, the, the state of the town's finances um, deserves the same. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Bogosi. Happy birthday, buddy. Thank you, sir. Uh, we must have the Carter Blue Butterfly at the Senior Center here because it doesn't look like the lawn's been mowed in the least of them. Um, Tom touched on the uh, protocol and procedure for the rate area. Uh, this is a public rate making proceeding. Um, or is your intention to hold it in secret? Or, uh, just don't understand. What are we doing to prepare? Uh, should I use sign language? I mean, I don't understand. This is public comment, sir. If you'd like to make a comment, you're welcome to do so. I am. Okay. I just did make a comment. And maybe it was in the form of a question. Uh, what? How do I, I have a question. Has this been advertised? Yeah. It should be. It should be. Yeah, it definitely will be. Yes. Okay. What is uh, your planned format for the public rate making proceeding so that the public can properly prepare for it? What? Will you let us, the public, know how you intend to conduct the rate making proceeding? I don't think those questions are difficult. I mean, it's rather basic. That is your job, and we're just asking, how do we prepare for it? But I see there's no response, and I don't understand the lack of response here. This has been going on for years. Jim, you alluded to the EPA 
have a strict compliance because there's a law. And that law says your work needs to be done, obviously, by December 31 of this year. There's also a law called Transportation Corporation Law that says you can't go past five years, but you're rapidly approaching nine. And we seem to put no importance on that, so why don't we just blow off the EPA thing? Let them wait a couple more years. I understand there's fines. There's fines for the town. Well, the town needs to understand there's cost for the residents involved in this, too. Because without a proper rate being assessed, the public pays what's going on for the past four years, for the past nine years. Nine years. Nine years, so to be done. Maybe the rate should be a lot less. Maybe the rate should be 20 bucks. Maybe the rate should be $1,500. How do we know? So the public is the one who can tell us. I understand that town will receive fines if they don't comply, but because of your lack of compliance. 30 seconds, sir. Well, you said pressing it earlier tonight about seven and a half minutes, and not once did you mention. I don't want to have to retract my happy birthday here. So, um, your, your lack of due diligence, your lack of action, causes the public to pay more. Well, what part of that don't you get? I, I mean, you have an opportunity to save hundreds of thousands of dollars for the residents, and yet you do nothing. It, that's incomprehensible. Uh, as a member of the public, why you would do that. And we ask what the protocol is, and you can hear a pin drop. Does nobody know what the plan is? I mean, do we just go blindly into it? And I have to agree with Mr. Rossi. That's the problem. You have no plan. There's no plan forward in any issue you've discussed here tonight. Nothing. It's bantered about, and nobody really knows what we're talking about. Nobody knows how much was spent by chasing. Nobody knows. We don't have any paperwork that shows what they've paid and what the, the village has paid them, what we owe the village. We don't know. It's a guess. We heard. We talked. Got some hearsay here and there. Nobody knows. We don't know what we're doing from one meeting to the next. And quite frankly, as a taxpayer, I mean, we pay considerable taxes in this town. And you're welcome for the development, because that development up there has garnered you increased sales tax. So we expect some professionalism and some performance. That's not too much to ask. You're getting paid every, every meeting. You're getting paid to be here. We expect that you do your job. It's that simple. And to not to sit there like a deaf mute when a question is asked, it's embarrassing for me as a taxpayer in this town that our representation is at such a low level. I still have the purpose. Anyone else? Well, I, I've got to say, so I want to say something to this. Um, I, I like, I get, Bruce, I think I made it very clear <coughs> that um, I want backup for this information. I spoke to the mayor and he has a bookkeeper on the phone. That's yeah. what I, I, will, I will take care of that. I will get it in writing. Barbara, I'm not, no, I and, get and it. And but the other thing is, I'm going to make a recommendation that in the next week or two, before the next meeting, that the supervisor get together with the attorney and another council person <clears throat> and set up a format for, for that meeting. For that I think September it should be done in public. Why okay. is it behind closed doors? Why you, you both, uh, John and yourself, asked for recommendations, and we complied. We sent you what the recommendations were, and I believe yeah. Tom sent a letter. Although there was a letter sent in January 27th of this year, mm -hmm. which is about seven months ago, almost exactly. Mm -hmm. And since January 27th to this time, there has been no discussion of that letter, not once. This should not be who decides what happens 
behind uh, closed doors. Okay. This is a public hearing, and it should be That's discussed right. okay. in public. But well, we have to set up a format. And you can share, share it with the public at the next meeting. And why? No. We do, no. No. Why establish it publicly? Why? Uh, why are you opposed? Okay. I'm sorry. This That's is like not a give and take. You want to discuss this afterwards? That's fine. Okay. I just don't know why there's opposition to yeah. discussing the format in public so everything is open and transparent. There will be a discussion in public. Of what the uh, protocol and process and procedure will be? Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Shannon. At the last meeting, I questioned um, my FOIL request. And I was told that I had received everything. Then I got an email that I didn't, which I already knew because I looked at it. But while I was researching the FOIL request, I talked to our account controller who told me that they don't use time off we request steps. That is not true because every other department does. I'm just wondering why there's no oversight on buildings and grounds. I was uh, unaware that they weren't turning in slips until you told me, and so uh, we've now got a protocol in place and they'll begin to follow those procedures. Okay, when I asked about um, why they don't punch on a time clock, I was told they don't have one and that it was a frivolous expense for the town to go through. Well, I don't know who told you that. Your controller. Okay, well, he was wrong. We've now got the time clock set up so that the buildings and grounds guys can punch in here. Okay, thank you for that. I'll be putting in a foil for their time clock records again in two weeks. Thank you. Anyone else? No, I'm sorry, sir. You've had your turn. Um, but I didn't use all my three minutes. Your brother did. Well, I thought I, I didn't. We're going to close the public comment. At this time, we need a motion to go into executive session to discuss employment uh, situation of the personnel. The truth from out here. Huh? You folks are despicable. So, Second. Can you pull the board, please? <coughs> Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Ed Hudson. Yes. Supervisors Aladdin. Yes. Where do you live? You know Go ahead, say it. Where does he live?